Hello, welcome to Terry TV. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got that wonderful feeling. Everything's going your way. Welcome to Terry TV. Terry Harden here, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer and pop icon. How are you today? Welcome. If you're just joining us, welcome. If you're joining us again, welcome. And if you're joining us after live, welcome. Wow, that's three, right? Happy holidays. You can see that I have a little bit of energy. Um, the 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 weights are being lifted off my shoulders a little bit, and uh, I'm happy to say that. It is going to be a trying Christmas, but for now, I am with you, and hello. Wow. What a beautiful day. Because you're here. Does that sound corny? Corny. Uh, but it's true. It's really true. Um, the weather out here is beautiful. About 60 degrees and pending rain. And I love the rain. I adore the rain. Uh, yesterday, I was in a torrential rain while driving. I'll be honest with you, I did not love that much. But uh, in California, it doesn't last long. <laughs> so you basically get through it. For those of you who maybe have recently moved to the California area or you haven't driven in the rain because you happen to move at the time when there was no rain for a long time, better known as a drought, when you're driving, the best time when there are torrential rains like that is to get on the freeway. And try not to get on a freeway where someone's had an accident or you'll be there forever. But the point is, is that the roads, I'm sure you know, on freeways, not just in California, are, are bowed a little bit. So what happens if you drive the center lane, the water is, is designed to go to the edges of the freeway so that your car tires can have traction and you won't hydroplane or fishtail. Now, best laid plans, but recently many freeways have gotten rid of the meridian, haven't they? That middle area where you could put your car if you had trouble. So sometimes when that meridian is gone, all the water is going to collect because it was designed to collect in the Meridian. And then when they take that away, so just be ready, both hands on the wheel. Remember when you were in driving school, you know, 10 and two, 10 and two, do that for yourself during these rains, especially torrential rains, because there's a lot of entitlement driving out there and you never know when someone's just going to take your lane. I had two people who felt that my Mustang wasn't worthy of that space and just no blinker, no nothing, just started coming over. If I hadn't had the ability to stop uh, or at least slow down, um, they would have hit me because they just float over. One guy floated over three lanes. Luckily, there was warning lane. So I slowed down. He went through my lane and went into the other lane. Entitlement driving is what's scary. So be careful out there. Ten and two. You know, I know many like to drive and have a drink. Uh <laughs> not a cocktail, guys. Get over yourself. You're silly. Too much New Year anticipation, isn't it? No, no, no. I mean a soda or your water bottle or whatever you like to do, you know, kind of the laid back, you know, especially if you got a giant truck or something like that. But, or you got a nice sports car, boom, boom, you know. Um, but both hands on the wheel, especially if the roads are wet. Just protect yourself and uh, be safe out there, not because you don't drive well, but because there's a lot of people out there that just don't. Many have forgotten where their signal is and will just come over and no indication where they're going or if they're coming or it's, it's, it's really frustrating and try not to get upset about it. There are times it makes me really, really angry and I try to just like, ah, you know, from my head. So, so there you go. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I will not be broadcasting on Christmas and chances are I probably won't put anything up. I might put a, a still shot uh, up through StreamYard, but there may not, there probably won't be a broadcast. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Okay. But I want you guys to rest, relax, enjoy the day. If it is Christmas for you, enjoy Christmas. Okay. Whatever that means for you. And if it's a work day for you because you're making buku bucks because it's a holiday, good for you. Own it. Enjoy it. Have fun. And then if it's solstice or something else that you celebrate and Christmas isn't exactly in that 
wheelhouse for you. You do Qantas or you do something else. And this day may or may not be, you know, significant in what you celebrate, then use it as a day of rest and reflection and just have a good time. Okay. My cousin says the full whole day is full of football. So we know what he'll be doing. And that's good because after I lost my dad, today is the, this, this is the first Christmas without him. So uh, my cousin is really excited to be watching football, but that's what he and my father did. So, um, so whatever it takes, stay up, stay happy, stay young. Okay. Realize that childlike attitude of yours, that childlike joy of yours. If you're a Disney person or you're a Lego person or whatever you, or you're an artist or whatever you are, that childlike joy is what keeps you young and happy and joyful. So stay joyful. And if not, get together with those who are. It's infectious. It really, really is. So welcome. I had a kicking day on the Patreon page today. I am working on their gift. So I think I mentioned in the last broadcast that I do a digital gift for my for my Patreon page. And this is because shipping is so expensive and I don't like the people who are outside of the U.S. to miss out. So we all agreed as a group, as a community, that digital gifts were fun. And I really work hard to do a nice digital gift. And this year, I think I did really well and I'm almost done. So I have to finish it and send it to them. And the goal is to get it to them before Christmas, whether if they celebrate it or not, that's what I celebrate. So they know that that's my deadline and they can get a little fun, little, I love you. You get to have this gift and it'll be shipped out to them. So not shipped out to them. It'll be digitally emailed to them. And uh, this time I'm going to have a little bit of a video saying, thank you. I love you. Kisses, hugs, all that. If you are interested in becoming part of Terry's tribe, we would love to have you. And I am going to show you how to get there. Patreon.com. Terry Harden. It's $5 a month to be a part of it. And uh, you are welcome to be a part of it. We love you. And we'd love to have you. Your voice needs to be heard. But you got to have some skin in the game. Because I'm a very busy artist. And so um, I show up and we talk about a lot of things that I could never talk about here in the public channel. But it also helps me to continue the public channel for you because, uh, you know, but $5 a month was designed so that those who are even on the tightest of budgets could still join. You know, you can put a jar at your door and throw a quarter in it. By the end of the month, you're going to have five bucks. So that's kind of, it doesn't have to be a quarter, but it's just a, you know, it's an idea if you really want to join there's ways to do it. So, um, so know that I love you and would love to have you be a part of it. And today was such a good, uh, a good broadcast. I always broadcast Mondays and Fridays live. And then we have a zoom call and the zoom call was also really great, but between Christmas and new year's, we've got an action packed fun thing. We do a thing called story time where people bring their favorite children's book and read to each other. Um, and we're trying to pick that day. We're working on how we can get as many people together to do that day for us. We may have to do it in two parts if there's a lot of people, but it's a Zoom call. And then we also do a treasure chest. So, uh, and I haven't done that in a while. So I promised them a treasure chest. And um, let's see, Zoom call, treasure chest. And there was a third thing that I've already forgot. Can you believe this? I see, busy me. Um, Zoom call, treasure chest, and something else. It will come to me. Ah, so much on my mind. But anyway, please think about it. Love to have you. Really would enjoy having you. Lots of fun. Really cool. And um, yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I am so, so excited. I think the gift might have been the third thing. But no, I think I had, I had to, it's not there. And I won't burden you with it because it's a tribe thing. So we'll go back to the tribe thing and I'll remember the third thing. But treasure chest, Zoom call, that's it. Treasure chest, Zoom call, story time. See, I knew it. I just had to say it in the proper order. So when we got to figure out as a group, when we're going to re, re, re-induct the treasure chest into our little mix. 
Then we're going to have the Zoom call, what time? Because it's between Christmas and New Year's. Some will be working, some won't. And then um, story time, which we did last year. And I was going to post it in the tribe. and just never got to it because this year was crazy. But I won't keep saying that. All right. So let's see what y'all have to say. How are you? What's up? What's happening? Hi, David. So today, hello, David. Today, I am going to show you some sculptures that are not Disney. I think I've showed you before some of my Disney pieces, and you can always Google and see these. But one of my dear tribe members, Leslie says, good morning. One of my dear tribe members, Evan, uh, said to me, um, he took me to see Ninja Turtles at Nickelodeon. And although I sculpted for years for Nickelodeon, I never went onto the premises. So I got the chance to go and see the studios, Nickelodeon Studios, and see a screening. And I love the Ninja Turtles. I, I enjoyed it, mostly because I was with Evan, but, uh, but also because I got to walk around and see the facility, which was amazing. Just a really cute little place. Uh, the Ninja Turtles, I was 50-50 on, um, a lot of sensory overload. And so I will probably, we, we, we get screeners here. So I'm going to look at the screener here on a smaller TV. And I think it's going to be a little easier for me. Um, a lot of movies seem to cater to you, all y'all who, all y'all who uh, play video games and stuff. And you like that, this kind of thing. And I, uh, I like to linger in a movie. Tell me the story and linger on stuff, you know, linger. You like that? <laughs> I like it to linger, okay, in a movie so I can kind of enjoy it, sit through it, think about it, contemplate it. And even then, Poor Things with William Dafoe. Uh, I, I, it, it was shot beautifully. The art is amazing. The story is really out there. And I'm still lingering on whether or not I like that movie or not. It is so bizarre if you haven't seen Poor Things. Um, you can tell me what you thought. Whoa. Woohoo. Wow. But, uh, but uh, it lingers in areas and you go, oh my gosh, I'm really lingering. And I don't know if I want to. Uh, so back and forth, back and forth, but uh, super good. One of the ones that allows you some pa 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 and some lingering and some story heart warming storytelling is your, your, you, you got, you, you're not going to believe when I tell you this is Godzilla, Godzilla minus one. Yes. You've got to go see it guys. And it was supposed to be out of theaters yesterday. I hope they extended it again. It is a brilliant, brilliant film. If you can see it in the theaters, please do. If it is gone in your area, know that on the 12th of January, they are releasing a special black and white edition. And I am over the moon for that. So uh, that's the movie that I just love. Lingering like crazy. Forgive me. I'm just checking. Luckily, uh, you know, I have elderly parents. And so the phone, as much as I really, eh, the phone, um, I have to have it on, um, on uh, ring because if I don't, my um, something important with my mother could, could be, uh, uh, missed and I don't want to miss that. So there you go. Anyway. Yeah. So I thought I'd show you some stuff today and, uh, with Leslie's good morning, I'm going to just sort of pop that away and then I will show you this stuff. So Evan heard I did, I worked for Nickelodeon and did SpongeBob characters. Uh, I used to do products, uh, product. I was in product development and, uh, I didn't design the products, but I was one of, I was a top sculptor of SpongeBob. Lucky me. Uh, <laughs> I should say it differently. Lucky me. Um, uh, that got to do some wonderful um, SpongeBob stuff. So I put together some of the things that are not Disney because I, a lot of times I will be a little Disney centric because most of the sculptures I do, uh, I choose to do are Disney based. I don't really dip into other character art, but I could, you know, one of a kinds I could, 
or realistic art. I do, I'm, um, I showed uh, uh, Mary and Joseph. They are not characters. They are realistic sculptures for nativity. So when it comes to commission art, I do just about anything at any size, just about any place. So just so you know. So uh, we'll start with a um, um, the Boston Celtics Ron Mercer. I did this piece for Mattel. And there's a picture of Ron. And then I did a sculpture. Forgive me, I'm not in my studio with the fancy cameras, but at least you can see a little bit that way. And uh, Ron's was going to be a doll, like in the form, not a Barbie doll, not a Ken doll, but a Ron Mercer uh, collectible doll. And a lot of times I was commissioned to do a lot of that stuff, right? So if we we flip and we go to the next one. That's a plaque, a winning plaque. Here is the sculpture of King Kong at the at the um, Grauman's Chinese Theater. And now, of course, it's it's something else, but it's always be Grauman's Chinese Theater. And the woman, and I know she's blurry. That's because it's taken from a photograph. My husband and I plan to do scanning so you can get better pictures of these. The woman in the paw is Fay Ray. So you have a puppet of King Kong that I built, uh, life-size, and then there's Fay Ray in the paw. What a great day that was. That was a piece for the 50th anniversary of King Kong. And then for Japan, this is me with my friend, best friend, and go puppeteer and author Lynette Eklund. And up there you see Admiral Akbar from Star Wars. That was a piece we did for Tokyo, Japan. So, Disney, but not Disney. Star Wars. I hope that qualifies. I hope you're excited to see him. He's all sculpted and he's a puppet. And there I am underneath articulating him. And I had to speak uh, Japanese. Luckily, I knew Japanese enough that I could lip sync with the character well enough. And uh, they would play playback and uh, do that. Uh, again, kind of a zero crossover. I mean, a Disney crossover. This is... Um, some pieces I did, uh, lovely little Zero in his dog bed. And do I have a quarter next to him? I don't. He's the size of a quarter up there, his little dog bed with his little candy cane. And then below there's cufflinks, Haunted Mansion cufflinks that I did for someone. So you get to see those. Here we go. Here's a better picture. See, sometimes I'm smarter than myself. So here's the cufflink. This was a gift from a fiance to her fiance to the husband. There's the dime. There's the cufflink I carved, sculpted in wax. Wax is very, very, you can get so super tiny. I'll show you. I'll keep showing you. But there's a cufflink. And then I was commissioned to do it in gold and in silver. There it is in, is that gold? Yeah, that's gold. So there they are finished as gold jewelry pieces. And then we have, oh, and then we were talking SpongeBob. So I was telling Evan that I did some work for Nickelodeon. This is a liquid soap dispenser. That's the words I was trying to think of earlier today. And it's got Patrick and SpongeBob on there. Don't think I'm educated with uh, Patrick or SpongeBob. It's not my kind of cartoon, um, but it's yours. So people like Evan told me. And here is the full bottle with the size. You can see by my thumb there that uh, the size of Patrick as well. And then you saw in the other picture with the dime that it is very small. You may also recognize very odd parents. So Nickelodeon would give me the fish in the bottom, the drawing in the top, and then I just had to sculpt the little face in it. I also sculpted uh, a big fish bowl and it was like a toy that you could put these fish in and they pretended to swim around in this giant toy fish bowl. Um, many of you have seen this, this is Disney, but this is a cake topper. Mickey proposing to Minnie. This was for a lady and a man who loved Mickey and Minnie, but they had tons of Mickey and Minnie's and none of them looked in love. So they asked me to do her in love. There she is right there. And uh, you'll notice um, that they designed the dress. Look at how cute all the dress. This is in wax. Her little shoes. You'll notice her crossed fit. Everything about the attitude of Minnie is do I say yes or not? It does he mean it? And you can see here with Mickey, he means it this time. He's not punking her. 
he means to propose. So that's what she wanted from her. Here is a demented SpongeBob. This is the thing that Evan really wanted. He kept trying to Google and finding out, did Terry actually do a deranged, insane SpongeBob? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, I can't show you the finished product of him because he was riding a chopper and that went to the painter and the model builders. Here's a closer shot of one of the characters. You can see the fish was handed to me and then I sculpted the face, all done in wax. And then they're put in that fun little fish bowl. Um, little Bill, well, I should probably show you Little Bill, my sculpture of Little Bill. This is a toothbrush holder for children. Um, I guess adults could use it too, but here's a toothbrush holder of Little Bill. And then here's the painting of Little Bill. So I don't paint Little Bill. Uh, I sculpt it and then it's cast and then it goes to a painter. But it's cute, isn't it? You may have had this. I don't know. I never got the toys. I just got the opportunity to uh, do that. Also, Hallmark challenged me to do a Hallmark ornament. So I did Spider-Man. So here's the Spider-Man ornament. You might own this one too. Him kind of doing the web shooting. I don't know how they hung him or anything. I just, I just sculpt it. Here's a sippy cup. This sippy cup has a uh, uh, SpongeBob at the bottom and then Patrick and whatever that octopus thing is swimming around. And then here's a close-up of Patrick trying to catch the fun objects. And you can see the paper in the background is the template that they had me do. And then it's one of those cups where the background has all of this, you know, but then a, a, over the top of it, it has a clear plastic. So then, you know, and then it has that seal around it and you pour liquid into it. And then that's what the character is, catching, catching fun. You may have bought the SpongeBob SquarePants soap. Floaty soap dispenser. He's sitting in an inner tube with his cute little flipper fins and his smile. And he's in the inner tube and you put the soap right in the inner tube and it floats in your bathtub. Should you have the opportunity to take a bath and want SpongeBob to join you. Here's a closer version of that zero that I did. That's the size of a silver dollar. 50 cent piece, actually. Uh, I'm just going through a few things here you've seen. Then I did this piece. This is a full-size uh, garden ornament of Groot. I went up north in Canada and took a class with a very dear friend of mine in feral cement, uh, a cement that's mixed. And um, let me just get out of this and find out where I am. Yeah, here we go. And I did super tiny pieces. So I don't know what Cinderella was used for, but you can see how small she is. This is the beauty of wax. You can sculpt really, really tiny. And then once she was approved, yeah, there she goes. She's painted. So here she is painted. Look at how beautiful that painting is. So why would I do it when someone else can paint? that well. And here's an example of just how small that head is. Number two pencil eraser and the sculpture of Cinderella's head. So uh, I told you I love to do small stuff. So that's why I got picked. Here's a wonderful um, picture of Evan as Peter Pan. I'm kidding. Um, Peter Pan. And the dime next to it shows his size. And then his profile. There's this cute little Panty profile. These pieces were done for um, some toy company in New York. I couldn't tell you what it's for. And then many of you know the amazing, the wonderful Dan DeMiner. And there he is, a tribe member. There he is. And the reason his picture is here is because he bought my Groot. So Groot is kicking it in the desert, enjoying koi fish to lovely gentlemen. And very, very happy. And look at the, the hair he put in there. Really cute hair. Let's see if I got a better shot of him with his hair. Here's another shot of him in the corner over here. See him right here? Yeah. So you can see there if I zoom in. The plant that's going to go in there is his hair. Doesn't he look cool? Yeah, he really is happy there. Isn't that beautiful? They did all that landscaping themselves. Lots of talent. A, lots of talent in the tribe and lots of talent 
surrounds me, I'm happy to say, oh, here's another close up. You can see how cute he looks. And the plant is just being tested in there, but you can see it really is a cute one. See, see, Ooh, right? Ooh, there's other commission work I could show you, but I wanted to kind of show you some of the things that I did that were, you know, not necessarily Disney because as an artist, I can sculpt just about anything. Um, I've designed man caves for people, meaning they call me up and say, Terry, I have a garage. I have a room. I want it to look like a cave and I'll get with them and do sketches and budget it out. And then we'll talk about building it. Um, I also didn't take a picture of it and it's a Disney one anyway. Um, a couple wanted Donald Duck crashing through their wall of their kitchen and they wanted that little hands, Donald's hands to be able to put utensils inside. And it was over their stove. They had one of those beautiful wolf stoves. And then Donald in a chef's hat going, rah, 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 and he had whatever utensils in his hands they wanted. So you can do these private commissions with me. Um, and then I tell you what the investment's going to be for you. And then we, we build it if you so choose, or we don't build it. Right. So, yeah. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, it's, it, it puts me in a festive mood and also the holidays are coming. And I was asked by a lot of you, do you only sculpt Disney? And the reality of it is I sculpt any and everything. Uh, I once did a giant uh, Egyptian figure that was 40 foot tall out of um, foam, you know, the um, floral foam using a cherry picker. You know, one of them is, G -G -G. yeah, yeah, using a cherry picker. And I do the rose floats often. I used to sculpt on the rose floats, rose floats here in Burbank. But I really went there with a different mission in mind, not to be one of their premier sculpture, sculptors, but to teach them, the self-built group, how to sculpt so that they would win and be able to compete with the professionals like Phoenix Floats or um, the other ones that you, you know, as you watch channel five, KTLA five, or you watch uh, the people who are going to the Rose Bowl, many floats were moved to the Rose Bowl to get ready for that week, which we call Deco week, which is the week between Christmas and New Year's. That's when the flowers get put on. It doesn't mean that the floats are decorated only in that week. They are built by festival artists or Phoenix floats. Those are two major companies. And then the floats are moved to the Rose Bowl, put in a big tent, and then volunteers sign up to put flowers on or status, dry flowers or whatever. But the actual flowers um, go on in that week uh, to get ready. And then New Year's Eve, they are driven down to the parade site in Pasadena. That's how it works. And here in Burbank, if you design a float, and anyone can design a float for the city of Burbank, you just have to reach out to Burbank Tournament of Roaches, see if you can be a part of it. If you, When you win, you win two tickets in the stands so you can view your float. But uh, the cool thing is you can be a part of the build, which I was very active in the build. And um, you get from the chassis up. Self-built means that volunteers and a community builds from the chassis up. So you've got your Cal Poly doing that. You've got your La Cunada doing that. You've got your uh, Burbank doing that. I think I was going to, I can't remember the other ones that do that too, but it's easy to Google self-built, but that's what it means. The design comes from a community person, maybe not necessarily in Burbank, but definitely uh, a normal you know, like a person with, that has an idea and they like it based on the theme that happens in January. If you, if you can believe it, January, right after the parade launches, uh, the, the, um, board for Pasadena gets together and decides on the new theme. And then they put it out there and you have to have your drawings ready, uh, for voting, I think in Burbank around the end of the month. And then February, I think is the month, if I'm not mistaken, where you take, where the winning design is taken, uh, the theme design for your self-built, that uh, board takes it down to uh, Pasadena to get it approved. And once your float design and name is approved, because they don't want a lot of floats that are named the same. So that all gets approved and stuff. And if, honestly, if you want me to walk you through, I've won 
uh, I've designed two floats that have won huge awards. But what's more important is that the city of Burbank has gone on to, to after my teaching of how to sculpt faces and figures has allowed them to fight for big prizes, huge prizes. Um, and uh, they're in the running against people who pay hundreds of thousands of dollars and they put in sweat equity. So it's great to see the little guy, if you will, compete with the big guy. Here uh, uh, in Burbank, um, the uh, president of the Tournament of Roses, uh, Burbank Tournament of Roses, dreamed of winning an animation trophy and a few years back he did it. And that's what I'm saying. I, I couldn't help with the animation, but I could help years ago before I taught this in 1996. That was my first float, Dream Flight. And, uh, and uh, uh, it was a little boy on roller skates holding the tail of a dragon. Surprise! Terry is dragon obsessive again. Um, and it took, uh, it took the uh, fantasy trophy, big trophy, because there's a trophy called the Founders, which is exactly for self-built floats. So, but, uh, when I taught, I, I won the, the choice selection in, for the 1996, uh, theme kids, laughter and dreams. And I told him I wanted to be a part of the whole process. I wanted to learn all about it because learning is fundamental to borrow a phrase. It's a lot of fun and it's really fun to get together with people whose passion are, and I learned all kinds of cool things about roses and flowers and the people behind them and the joy of Steven and what, why he wanted to, to, to win the animation trophy. Those kind of things are really great. And you can only see them face to face from these people. So it was really exciting and fun to be a part of that. Not always great, but the challenges, you know, back and forth. In fact, when um, we get in Deco Week, which, what did I say? between Christmas, so the 26th to the 30th and the 31st, because the 31st, you got to be ready to get it down to the location for Pasadena, don't you? Because it, it starts at eight o'clock in the morning here. So there's judging and the judges come and judge three times. I don't think that's changed. So they will judge midweek of Deco Week. They will judge, I believe, on the 30th. And then they judge on the 31st, 29th or the 30th, depending. And then they judge on the 31st at the location. So they line all the floats up at Pasadena. And then at 3 a.m., the judges come and judge them for the final time. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, we, uh, uh, and so all the floats have to be moved to the Pasadena uh, main, main Colorado Boulevard, as you guys know, if you watched it, they all need to get to that location. So uh, many people know the parade route of self built floats and they're there cheering them on in the middle of the night. And I rode in a, uh, in a truck on the outside, one of those that has the panels that stick in and out those little gates. I rode, rode in one of those uh, it, uh, behind in front of my float in front of my float dream flight float and uh got to wave to people and say hi and and park and oh it was great and i stayed up all night was there for judging and then that you don't know what you win until the day of the parade when you see a banner in front of you so it really is cool founders trophy is exclusively for self-built floats because they kind of felt sorry for the little guy back in the day and they weren't winning anything but now uh, they win. They win all the time. They win all the time. La Cunada, um, Cal Poly, Burbank, and uh, forgive me if I, um, Sierra Madre. I think Sierra Madre is another one. Um, and then there's, it's like six self-built people who the community gathers all year round. They weld, they cover in the cloth. Then they cover, they cut the status, which is the dried flowers that is going to cover a majority of the float. And then they do the roses. They research the roses. They research the guys. It is incredible. And if you really want to see a self built, a self built in action, it find out where their built, their build site is. Wish I could talk today. 
And the build site for Burbank is at the Burbank Water and Power Station right next to the Metro Station. So go look at Tournament of Roses, Burbank, tournamentofroses.org, I think is the website. Look it up. They're going to tell you their hours. <coughs> Forgive me. And um, and you can go and volunteer. And it's so much fun to do it with a self-built float. They build in Burbank. And La Cunada was under the freeway overpass at where the 210 and the 134 Chrissy Crossy, there's an area there where they used to build. Now, I don't know if they still build there, but that's where they used to build. And you can come in and help them as well. Deco Week is a lot of fun. That's when they offer. Uh, you, you can volunteer all the time. But that's the big volunteer week because unlike the Phoenix artists and festival artists and all of that, the big floats that do it for like Baskin Robbins and Honda and all that, uh, they don't bring volunteers in until that deco week, but Burbank all year round. Um, you do have to talk and talk to Steve and talk to that organization because they, they want to know your skills and they want to bring you in and they got to talk to you about safety and you got to take all those tests and stuff, but it's really cool. It's really, really cool. I go to see it, but I don't do it anymore because they're doing great. You know, I was the training wheels for self-built floats. Steve being as wonderful as he is, Steve Edwards from of Burbank, California, um, Tournament of Roses, he automatically said, Terry, can we invite all the self-builts to learn? And they all came over and I taught them how to sculpt. And once they got it, they went off and I never saw them again. Uh, Glock Kenyatta invited me to come out and help them with uh, taking what they had learned small, because I taught small, and put it big. So I was out there uh, in that same year for the 1996 float to help them carve a big head for their piece. But once they got the idea, they ran with it, and all these self-builds run with it every single year now. And I can just smile and say, um, look at my goslings. They're doing great. And the designers that have come up through there are amazing. And the pieces they've done, the work they've done, the trophies they've won. They won Queens. Queens is a huge award. It is best theme. Well, now they have a theme one too. But Queens used to be the best use of roses. And that's a big one when you're rose people, isn't it? So very, very cool. Very, very amazing. Stunning. Breathtaking. Uh, so if you want to do something that's cool, doesn't, you know, They'll ask you for a donation. Of course they will. They're, they've got to fund their floats. But uh, they're doing, they, they're, guys go down. It doesn't, I don't think it costs anything to watch, see them do it. But then if you want to volunteer, they bring you in and you get to do stuff. And it's really, really kick. I loved it. I was there deck a week and just made sure the volunteers were entertained. Every I tried to keep everyone upbeat and happy and joyful. And then you really know the diehards because you're sleeping in your car those last few days. Your New Year's, your uh, 28th, 29th, 30th can be in your car because you are around the clock decorating for your self-built float. That's dedication. Uh, hot cocoa never tastes so good. Uh, your your folded down seat in the car never felt so good. And then riding down there New Year's Eve and not getting a lick of sleep uh, before New Year's Day is a lot of fun. So I highly encourage you to be a part of it. I wanted them to run. My, God, my job, my passion is to show you the path. Ignite that wet gunpowder that you are having trouble figuring out what you can do and how you can enjoy your life doing it. And then off you go. We talk, but I don't want to micromanage you. I don't want to continue to do that. I take great joy in knowing that I was the foundation. And now you're all are just building and making, making miracles everywhere I look. And to know I had a small part in it is the joy of joys. I can't tell you. I can't get over how many things that have been the launch pad for you all. And then you've gone to do tremendous things. And I love hearing about them, all of the successes that you have and continue to have. And it's because I just unlocked a little part for you. And I'm grateful and thankful that I have that ability. And uh, I like to share it with you. So uh, there's gratitude. There's my gratitude to you. And I thank you very much. And I hope you will consider joining Terry's tribe because we dig into it much deeper. And it's only for $5 a month. And the reason I keep it at $5 a month 
I could ask more for the membership, but I want everyone to be able to be a part of it. You know, I want you all to be able to take part in it. So I know it's, it's as easy as skipping a Starbucks or a quarter in a jar next to the door, right? You'll find a way. But if I charged higher price and the portals that I have are for people who feel they're getting a really good, that I'm doing a lot of good and they want to support me, they want to celebrate me, there are higher tiers as in every Patreon page. But the, the, the base tier is the one that you can all check it out, see if you like it, and climb the ladder if you wish. Now, right now, I need to make that ladder a little more interesting. I really need to make those some levels more interesting. So don't feel obligated. Just come and see if you like it. And if you do, stay. And your voice needs to be heard because you've got something to say. I know you do. And I love you for it. Okay, so there you go. Let's hear what you have to say. Since I said your voice needs to be heard, let's hear what you have to say. There's Dan DeMeyer right there saying hi, Terry. And you saw his picture, didn't you, with Groot? Um, he's the great Groot, uh, the great uh, daddy of Groot now. Some places got hit with 16 inches of rain in one hour. Yeah, that was not me, but it felt like it. I think like I felt like I got hit with 10 inches of rain in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Man, I should have done the back extra. I should have done the swim, the swim, the swim, because it was... <laughs> It was unbelievable, guys. Woo! It was scary tales. I love that, Wayne, but I want to be indoors making something magical and my car parked getting uh, God washed instead of me driving it um, because, uh, yeah, a bit scary. I won't even lie. A bit scary. Connie, there she is. Now, Connie is a tribe member. But, you know, you have the right as a tribe member to get up later and come and see me. You can come to both. I'd love to have you come to both. So she says Merry Christmas and sending love. And she also wants you all to have love from Connie. So uh, a tribe member, a great addition to that group. Beautiful, beautiful stories from her because she knew Walt and was an ambassador. So we love hearing um about her life, about her, uh, what's happening now, about uh, the fact that she can still look amazing in a set of those Marquis de Sade high heels, which I won't go near, um, and stuff like that. So, so I encourage you to come and be a part of the tribe. And if not, you can hear from Connie here as she wishes you all a very Merry Christmas and love. There's a heart right there from Connie. Rose, hi, everyone. Hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you, Rose. And tell Bob to rest. We're wanting him to take it easy. Relax. You know, great time to cuddle you for a while. Just wear a mask since he's not feeling well. <laughs> Don't give you that gift. Uh, Bob does not have COVID. He just is feeling a little under the weather. He said he was feeling sick. And I said, well, my darling, um, you know, bring it down. Cause a lot of times we'll, <laughs> I'm looking at her right now. Uh, uh, it can overwork ourselves and therefore then get really tired, girly run down because we have trouble stopping. <laughs> we just do. That's what, when you're having a fun life, it's hard to slow down, isn't it? But you should use these days to kind of rest and reflect if you will. Uh, sending love to the time. She says, Mwah! I say too the same thing. Merry Christmas to you and yours, says Wendy Cooper. Thank you, Mademoiselle Wendy. It's great to hear from you. Look at here. We got Lee Forbes in the house. Happy days. How are you, my darling? Good to see you. Uh, wishing you all the best as well. This is my cousin. Merry Christmas, cousin Julie. I know we haven't chatted. You need to go see mom. See, I said it in front of everybody. Did you see how I did that? Poor Julie. She'd never do that. And I shouldn't do it again. Julie, you need to go see mom, by the way. <laughs> I really am becoming one of those older relatives, aren't I? Yeah. 
just just no you know the filter is getting less and less and i never really had one to begin with but uh julia know i'm saying it with love but yeah go see mom um <laughs> uh hugs darling uh but yeah great to hear from you sweetie Debbie, how are you? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. And remember, Monday, I will be taking that day off uh, to be with family. I mean, I will be taking it off from here. Yeah. And then I'm back Friday. Back on Friday. Yes, I'll be back on Friday. Mike, hello. Good to see you again. I knew you were going to be here. Awesome. Aloha, can you? Aloha, Kanihina. How do you say it? Kanihinaka is the thing we say. That's it. It means good morning in Hawaii. Let's say, Aloha, Kanihinaka is the thing we say on this bright Hawaiian Christmas day. Isn't that right? I thought it was Mela Kalikimaka, though. I thought there was an M in there. No? Um, maybe it's both. I, I'm just thinking of the song. You see, I tell you that music is not my obsession. I couldn't tell you who sang it, but uh, I always dance to it. So, um, and I remember stuff. Things pop into my head that I don't even know how they got there. Uh, it means good morning in Hawaiian. Yes, I know. It means good morning. So the other one, Mela Kalikimaka is the thing we say on this bright Hawaiian Christmas day. Right? So it must be... Uh, yeah, yeah. See, see what you triggered, Daniel. <laughs> Can't remember the rest of the words though, but it was fun to sing that part. Uh, what year did you sculpt Spider Man for Hallmark? I need to find one, Diane. Uh, I sculpted Spider Man before I was gay engaged to my beautiful and amazing handsome husband, I think. Maybe not. Maybe we were married. Nope, we were engaged. So that means over 20 years ago. <laughs> I tell you, if you Google me, stand back. Uh, I surprise me how much I've done. But remember, I've said to you often, and I've often said this to the tribe, and I'm going to leave uh, Diane's little question here because Diane is part of the tribe too, uh, is the door of opportunity will open. Just go through it and figure it out after. And I do that without even thinking. I can be half asleep and the door of opportunity will open and I'll fall through it and not even re realize I'm there. And I'll hear the door close and I'll be like, all right, just give me a minute in case this is for my mom. It's not. Yay. Don't you love it? When, well, you don't love it when it's not, but at least, you know, it's not my mother trying to, someone trying to reach me, not realizing that I'm broadcasting. I do this all the time. So why are you calling? But, uh, but yes, uh, I would go through the door of opportunity, door of opportunity. Even if I had absolutely no idea, Dragon's Lair Paris, uh, what I was doing because the experience, the learning experience, I'm so obsessed with that. I love the learning experience and uh, I love learning. And so I have to be careful because I love learning so much. I'll grab classes and then I have so many classes I have to take that I don't get through them. In fact, I have several painting classes that I need to be a part of, but luckily they give me a lifetime membership. So hopefully in my lifetime, I'll get to do more painting. But this year was one of those years where I was busy with my family. And that's the way you want to be. I mean, I said the other day, thank God. Thank God I have a job that allows me to step away and take care of my dad who needed me so, so, so much. And still be okay, you know? And that's really, I think, important. If I'd had a job job, if I had been working someplace like, you know, fast food or Amazon or something like that, uh, I might not have gotten that time off. And I needed a lot of time to dedicate to my dad, to fight for my dad, to help my dad until uh, he crossed over in September. So I'm just grateful and thankful for that opportunity to be where I am today, where I can do that. And uh, I'll always be thankful for that. So 
although it was a title year, and for many of you, I know you, you've got the same thing going on. So you had a similar year, uh, a, a comet that whipped you around, bam, 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 and then a nice, fun, upbeat thing that happened, a good thing, like season five of Outrageous Pumpkins actually getting greenlit. That was a big happy day for me because they were saying they didn't think it was going to happen. And then we are, we did shoot it and it comes out next year. So stay tuned for that. I'm not going to tell you anything else about it. Just going to tell you if you're people who love uh, Outrageous Pumpkins, we did do a season five and it's better than any other season. I'll tell you that it is on fire. So uh, be ready for it. it you're going to, you're going to love it. Did I scare you? I didn't mean to scare you. Um, you can see now that I am really getting back on track. Whew, thank God. Could have been that I did some drawing yesterday. Could have been, yeah, that I did some drawing yesterday. And I'm working on the gift for my Patreon page uh, for my tribe. I always send them a digital gift every year and I'm almost done. And I'm so excited to get on it. <laughs> it's over here, but I'm not going to show it to anybody. <laughs> but I decided on a digital gift, as I said before, because uh, everybody can partake of it. I've got uh, a tribe. The community comes from Australia, Portugal, France, uh, UK, Canada, Mexico, you know, um, everywhere. And shipping is silly. If I wanted first year, I did. I shipped items because I wanted them to have, you know, tangible, holdable stuff. And it cost a fortune. And it, I don't understand why. I don't understand. There's got to be a way to ship across the pond to European countries without costing an arm and a leg, but I haven't found it out yet. And the same, you know, um, a lot of times, I mean, especially being on the internet with YouTube, Facebook, Patreon page, whatever you're doing, TikTok, and you want to send stuff out to your, 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 your followers and stuff, they're everywhere because of this beautiful venue that we can be thankful for. Um, so it's kind of weird. I don't know why it doesn't, you know, connect and collate, but it doesn't. So we came up with this digital gift idea and it's creative because I have to make it. That's the criteria. I have to create it and then send it to you. So you have something fun to play with if you're part of the tribe. So another reason to join the tribe, um, indeed. Uh, but the, it's mainly the group is great. And once you join, I think you really, really enjoy it. There is hope for the human race. That group is it. Uh, I love the group, Plander. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, you know, it's so funny because I went up to Canada to learn this technique with my friend. And uh, he is amazing, very talented. He was doing his first real big class. And he had done other classes. But he decided to like make this like larger. And afterwards we sat together and we talked about how it needed to change because an art, an artist will put their soul into teaching you, but they have to be compensated for their knowledge. And ferro cement is unique, fun, and fabulous. So much better than cements. It's mixed with uh, fiberglass, uh, not fiberglass. It's mixed with some sort of, oh, he would tell you, he would, he would, he would tell you, I'm not going to tell you but he has a classes in um he had a class in uh, canada and what i did is i went up and stayed with him um ivano and uh and uh uh spoke to artists up in canada and we traded like fly me up and i'll speak to you feed me and i'll speak with you um pay allow me to sell my wares and I'll, you know um now in my current position uh, this allowed, this was great for me. And I did get uh, paid to speak to some Canadian artists. And that's how we found the amazing Jenny G because she had, a, she was an amazing artist. Her work is absolutely off the chain, gorgeous, but she was, um, she was, was stuck. And I had 37 artists that were stuck that night. And we went and I spoke to them and got them unstuck. I have an ability with this because I ask you questions and then I say, but what about? For example, many of you out there that are artists continue to tell me you don't know what to charge for your art. Hello. Yes, you do. 
and I prove it. That's one of the reasons for joining the page as well. You can sit there and I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. You will sit back and go, whoa, whoa. I, I'm trying to think. I just did this with a group that thought all they were going to do. Ah, I remember. Okay, so I have, as you would imagine, as a Disney Imagineer, I have Disney Imagineer friends, Disney Animator friends, Disney Legend friends, Disney friends, and then Disney Collector friends, you guys, Disney followers and friends, you guys. And I know a lot of you don't are following because not Disney, because I give you pearls of wisdom, I hope. And, uh, and uh, one of my very close Disney friends said that she had some good people in town, and one of them was a 14-year-old boy, quite brilliant. And uh, he wanted to interview someone for a project. And she said, how about an Imagineer? And she suggested me. He was only in town for a little while. And I said, why don't we go have a meal? Because I love to do that if you're in town. I love to share a coffee, share a, a dessert, share a meal with you. I think that's one of the most fun things to do with someone. And I am old school. I love to be face to face with people. That's just the best. And uh, so he sat across from me and his whole family was so sweet because not only did I answer some of his questions, but we talked about something different because this young man is like me. He's mixed race and he doesn't look as light skinned as I am, but he's still, he's lighter skinned than most. And he talked about where he lived and how some of the experiences he went through. And we were able to talk, you know, when you find someone that's like you, you know, um, unicorn sees unicorn. Hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, a puppeteer. I'm always doing this, but, uh, but it was wonderful. And we talked about things I don't think he knew to ask because he had never seen me before. And then when he saw me and then I explained to him my background, he said this with his background because he has, uh, uh, like me, I have a white mother, black father. Well, so does he. And he was so excited to find someone that was like him. 14, him, me, 66, going on five years old. So we had a great conversation, but people who benefited was his mother who turns out to be an artist and creative person, but has some of the challenges that you do as artists. First of all, your own voice. Sometimes you're, you're confident and you go in, which was his mother. But then there's that time that you have doubt, even myself. I've had to be the adult in a room. Let me tell you, this has been a very doubtful year for me. So you have to watch out for that doubt voice. You know, you you have to tell that doubt voice, talk to the hand, I can do this. Wait till I'm finished. It isn't a stupid idea. You just wait and see, all right? Um, don't let that inner voice of yours keep you from doing something wonderful. And uh, she was doing very well in her business and her art. But there were a couple of things she was challenged with. And so I said, may I? I hope I said, may I? And I uh, shared with her some things. And then afterwards, they said, wow, we all benefited from this conversation, not just my son. And uh, that's a great thing for someone to say to you. You know, wow, I got to take something away. You know, when I speak to the boy, the young man, because he's 14 going on 27, um, he's an amazing kid. Uh, he absolutely was a thinker, impressive, um, insightful, brilliant. Just you can't say enough words about being opposite someone and only 14 years old named uh, Oscar. Amazing, amazing. What a joy. And for me, I got something from it too. Let me not uh, uh, go away from you today without saying Oscar and your family. Mwah, thank you for just uh, uh, being such an influence in my life as well. Just a complete and utter blessing. And uh, those of you who are out there thinking that the younger generations are horrible, entitled, and worthless, please don't brand anybody like that. Understand that that there may be a few out there that are like that and getting 
most of the airtime on social media. But just because they're getting airtime doesn't mean they're they're everybody. There are definitely young unicorns out there, and they are absolutely uh, mind blowing. They are just so smart, so talented, so imaginative, so dedicated and passionate. And so uh, if I can be of help to those of you who have one of those wonderful beings in your life and they want to speak with me, um, consider Terry's tribe or consider reaching out to me. Okay. Consider just hitting me up with an email. Terry at terryharden.com. You can go to terryharden.com. That's my website. And click on there and email me and talk to me about what you need. I have someone currently who looked and looked and looked and looked high and low for me. Maybe they didn't know how to Google. And they want to do a puppet course. So, which I want to do for the tribe. I want to get some more courses out. That is a something I want to do in the new year. But first, for my husband love of my life and the reason I exist on earth, I think the reason I can stay and be as po positive, as upbeat, as happy is my husband that I will celebrate with in January, 20 years of marriage. And we both were saying we can't say that without a hesitation because it doesn't feel like that. It feels like about two days. And we've known each other a lot longer than 20 years. We were engaged for 11 or seven, something long. And before that, we lost touch for 15 years. So, um, you know, then we got back together and it's been bliss ever since. And I never thought it was going to happen. And I thank God every day for, for having him. Don't know what I did, but I always pray, don't let me stop doing it, to have such a wonderful human being in my life. Look at me the way he does. Talk to me the way he does and take care of me the way he does. I mean, guys, I want you to understand that I am the type of lady whose fingernails get dirty, who wears pajamas most of the day, who, I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, that's what I like sculpting in my pajamas. I mean, full disclosure, um, does not wear heels, uh, takes work to dress up better if I have a dresser. <laughs> And I'm covered in goop, uh, rubber cement, hot glue, cement, plaster, clay. And he still opens the door for me and treats me like a lady. And it's absolutely heaven. It's heaven. Um, retired. This is his first year of retirement. And one of the things that he just does for me that makes me feel a little bit weird, I'm going to be honest, um, is he makes tea for me. Because for close to, gosh, over 20 years, you know, we dated. Like I said, we were together for long, long, longer. Uh, but let's just say 20 years for now. When he was working, um, we I made tea for him and cooked because he had the night shift. So he would work at night and be very, very tired in the morning. So I would make the tea. I would make the breakfast. I would be the dinner person. Um, and now... He takes care of dinner for this time when I've been struggling. He's made dinner. And I am so grateful because I have these deadlines sometimes that are like, Rrr! and to ask him if he'd be sweet enough to make dinner and he'll come in with it without me even asking. He'll make the dinner and it's something wonderful and amazing. Or he'll make coffee or he'll he'll make me my cup of tea like this one. Um and it's just so wonderful. All of these little nuances that make marriage so lovely. Um, a hug, a kiss, or just taking your arm when you're getting angry over something and saying, you got this. You know, um, strong women, of which I am, have a hard time in, uh, attracting someone so beautiful and lovely as this. So um, I'm grateful and happy and joyful that uh, I can say that uh, we're about to celebrate our 20 year wedding anniversary. Now, those of you out there who are going, well, I'm celebrating 48, I'm ce celebrating 36, I'm celebrating 65, you're my goal. 
And I know you're having as joy as I'm having joy. So congratulations to you. And I'm following y'all, you know, happy days. And I just want to acknowledge today on the public channel that, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's joyful. It's joyful. Mm. It really is lovely. So for those of you who haven't found your soulmate, don't rush into it. Okay. These things take time. Be patient. Write down what you want in a partner. Okay. Write it down and carry it with you. Start with sense of humor. You know, some people say I want him to be rich. No, start with sense of humor. Then you can put rich if you want. But sense of humor is so important. Someone who can tease you and be, and sometimes I have to ask my husband to, to not do it because, you know, the week that I, I had to put my father in the cemetery, I just was really nothing but prickles. And he was so lovely. You know, he was so lovely to just, because he loved to pun. And he, he's, he's fast. He's so fast. So we, 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 we're back into that now. And I must say, I'm grateful. Uh, sometimes I go, whoa, but, uh, I love him for it. So here's to you, my love. Uh, and to all of you out there, of course. Michelle says, wishing everyone a beautiful Christmas from the heart. And Michelle means it. She is a lovely, lovely, lovely person and uh, part of the tribe. Yeah. I hate to tell you, but a lot of the people that come and join me here are from the tribe. And, and if you like what they say here, you get an idea of who's there, don't you? Before you even lay down your five bucks. So there you go. Merry Christmas, Terry and Tribe. Love and hugs from Diane, another Tribe member. Hello. Wow. Catherine Taylor, been a wild girl. How are you? Good morning. Merry Christmas. We love you. Have a great season and an amazing new year right back at you. I really want to thank you for joining me today. All of y'all, all y'all, all y'all, thank you for joining me today. <laughs> Mike asks how my mom's doing. She's got the Mike, the tooth pain has come back as of yesterday. So as soon as I say uh, Merry Christmas and I sign off here, I'm going to run and see her, see how she's doing. Because uh, I got to, we got to, we got to deal with this tooth during the holidays. Ah! <laughs> Do you have that relative that gets an issue during the holidays? You know, um, my dog, uh, we just found out she has kidney stones, poor thing. And she has to wait till after the holidays. Uh, the doctor says that the main reason, though, is that she wants to go over uh, the results once she gets the results back for my dog, finding out what kind of stones they are in my little dog and what's the best uh, way to get them gone. Um, but uh, again, praise, praise God for my husband because he's the one that said, you know, she might not be well. She's having a few accidents and, and she's a very smart dog. And um, today, just making a routine change, we did a slight diet change starting today. And we did a routine change last night. She woke up sparkly. Lindsay, my husband, he said, oh my gosh, she looks so much happier. And she is. We just changed a few things knowing that she could be in some pain, even though she doesn't show it. And she could be uh, not being able to be comfortable. And so this could be consistent pain. So the vet gave us something to help her feel better. And then also we're taking more potty breaks. Well, we aren't. She is. We're taking her out. Let me be clear. <laughs> but that way she doesn't have the pressure adding to what pain we cannot tell because she can't communicate with us. But she is one of those types that just sucks it up. She doesn't whine or whimper. So it's really hard to tell when she's really hurting. And she must have been really challenged because today she's a different dog. She's very, very happy. Probably a little tired too. So she's she's resting next to my husband right now, who is <laughs> retired. Michelle says South Pasadena and Sarah Madre also do. Exactly they do. And raise money all year long in order to pay for them. This is correct. And they were two of my students back in 1995 for the 1996 Tournament of Roses Parade. They were students as long as well as Burbank and um, Cal Poly. 
Mm -hmm. And I think in, in, in addition to these two and the two I just mentioned, there's two more, but they're not boop, 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 in my head right now, but definitely. Yep. 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 Michelle says, if anyone has time to go down and volunteer, they'll show you what to do. And it's a blast, but dress warm. Flowers need to stay cold. She's so right. <laughs> She's spot on. So it sounds like Michelle has done this before. Um, and I, I highly recommend you coming down to Burbank and decorating. There's Michelle, because you'll never go back. I think my client uh, uh, is going to come and do it. He's done it for two years in a row. He said, I'm in town. Where can I decorate a float? And I said, here. And he loves it so much. Everybody, ah! you know, so it's really cool to decorate the Burbank float. So I hope you'll come and do it. Hello, Debbie. Nice to see you. Debbie again, Christmas tree for y'all. Hello, Greg. I love Outrageous Pumpkins all four seasons. I thank you for that. Thank you so much. And now you know there's a fifth one coming. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, four was excellent, wasn't it? Four was like the, the breakout, I think. You can tell me what you think, Greg. But uh, they were able to do some sculpting of things like Batman, for example. And whoa, that was so sweet. So having such a breakout opportunity, it hasn't stopped for season five. So it's going to be really, really fun for you guys to see. I can't say anything more, but that gives you a nice teaser. Bene! Um, I stopped shipping to European countries for those reasons. Exactly, Greg. So one of the things you may consider, Greg, and I don't know your followers, but one of the things you may consider, consider, consider is a digital gift. And you can it can be anything. It can be last, last year for the tribe, I did um, some illustrations of the Muppet characters, my own but of the Muppet characters and you could, I do them in a vector file. So that way they can blow them up big and make, you know, uh, plant markers if they garden or they can make them standees if they want them, or they can make them giant adhesive things. You know, those things you put on the walls for your, for your, you know, the sports figures because it's a vector file. It can go big and it can go small and uh, all things in between. I learned that. Uh, from my husband and others. But uh, uh, so I do those in a vector file so you can have a good time and play and enjoy it. Goody, goody. And I do that every year, something fun for them. Um, one year I get a page to color and uh, uh, I try to, you know, kind of outdo myself each year um, for them, you know. But, you know, the tribe is so wonderful. They're just happy I think of them. This is the beauty of them. Every single person at the tribe is just like, we're just glad to get a gift from you. You know, we don't care what it is, you know, so it's cool. It's cool. And uh, one of the tribe people is, a, is a, a performer and he posted on our private Facebook page one of his performances. And so I'm very eager to see it. I'm very excited to see it. He does, um, he portrays different people in history. And so it's really fun to see that. So I'm telling you, it's a rocking place. Patreon.com slash Terry Arden. I know it sounds, it may sound like an ad to some of you, but that's because some of you, you know, do you know it takes sometimes seven times suggesting something to someone before they take action? You know, those flyers you get in the mail, this is why you get a lot of them because you usually, the, the statistics show it takes seven times for people to act. On average, some people act more quicker, some people take longer, but the point is this is why on every channel that you follow, if we have a page and we want to tell you the benefit of said page, Patreon page, the benefit we provide and we all provide as a group in my case, we're going to talk about it every single time. So, you know, with tolerance. Understand there's a benefit for you here. Okay. You here. So consider patreon.com slash Terry Arden and check it out. $5 a month is all it takes for you to be a part of an amazing group and be that amazing group. So um, come in and check it out. I urge you to do that. Give it as a Christmas present to yourself. Um, 
because you won't you won't be sorry and if it turns out not to be for you we're not gonna you know slander your name on facebook or call you horrible names we're gonna say we love you go and keep in touch keep in touch with me here on this channel so that i know you're doing well you know i have a wonderful wonderful friend i made in the tribe named savannah and Savannah stays in touch with me all the time. She has moved on from the tribe because guess what? The girl got busy. So, hey, cool. You know, some feel like they want to support you with the five per month because they want you to keep doing this wonderful thing for others. Or they just want to be able to pop in when they can and pop out when they can't. But others, that extra $5 a month, if you're really busy, can be used differently in a different way. And no one understands this better than me. So please don't think if you need to opt out that you're going to get in trouble, but you got to try it. If you don't try it, how do you know if you're not going to like it? Isn't that what your parents say? But trust me, I'm not, I'm not liver. <laughs> We're better than liver in the tribe. <laughs> you won't get a bad taste in your mouth. You will have lots of fun. It is really, it's a great group. And it's not, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not all me. All right. It's not all me. The people in there have taken really good care of me this year. So uh, it's a great group of people. And, uh, and one you need to be a part of if you're someone who has something to say and give. You know, we're very respectful of each other in there. We're kind to each other. We, we, I can easily say we're a family and we love each other. And uh, we're not mean. If you're mean, um, you know, a big fun, if you're going to go in to disrupt, to to cause problems, to be mean, we, we don't have those people in there, you know, and we don't want those people in there. Um, but those that come and just need some help and everybody helps, everyone supports, everyone ha gives ideas comfortably without being judged or chastised like you could get on a public channel like here, right? Um, someone might say something and then someone gets angry and then the next thing you know, um, you know, so the private page is very, very special and I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, God worked through me, obviously, because this has been the one of the biggest, this has been a huge blessing in my life. Let me say it that way. A huge blessing in my life is Terry's Drive. So please join it. Please join it. Let me just show you one more time the banner. So just in case you want to, you can check it out, right? Okay, here we are. Patreon.com slash Terry Harden. That's all you do. Or you can just Google my name or go to Patreon and put my name, Terry Harden, in the search box and you'll find me. I'm not, I don't hide so well anymore, guys. <laughs> so uh, you're, I'm very easy to find. Very, very easy to find. So uh, I hope you will, um, you will come and join us, okay? Uh, you know, please, please, please do that. All right. Okay. So, uh, okay. Here's the next, <coughs> forgive me comment. This was, how was my mom doing? So I spoke about my mom. And Michelle talking about Sierra Madre. Um, and if you have time to go down and volunteer, <coughs> I ran out of water. I mean, I ran out of tea. Hi from Debbie and the Christmas tree. And then Greg had chatted with me, right? And then Debbie, this is good to know. I make Julian very often. I get stuck even for months at a time. Debbie, I tell you, we'll, we'll work a little together. If you decide to be a part of the tribe, that's where I really start to work. It's it's light work because you know if you really later on um, the 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 pa the pandemic really you know put a hitch in all our get alongs, didn't it? So I will say to you very very honestly and very openly, um, I have a retreat that I'm going to work on gearing up again for if not in 2024, definitely in 2025 where we gather, I only take 10 people and we sit down and we really dig into your business. And the last one was phenomenal. And so uh, we will do that. But on the, in the tribe, we touch on that. That's, 
that's what I'm there for is to help you. And some people need a little help, you know, some people need a lot of help, but you all do great. You know, um, one of the tribe members, Chris McCauley, he was stuck. Also, he is one of the top comic book illustrators and writers, I think in the universe personally. And oh my gosh, if you look at his public page, he is so busy. He just exploded. And I think I said a sentence to him. He said, I'm stuck. I said a sentence. And then like he ran away and he would check in with me ever so often. And we collaborated on a project and had a really great time. And we're having trouble just having a phone call now because he's so on fire. And this is just makes me so happy that I had a little part in helping him be so successful. A tiny light in his life. And now he's oh, just great to see him smile. He's just, he's just beaming, 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 beaming. Yeah. So if I can just be that little, that little light that helps you get started and you go and you run and you're amazing, then uh, hopefully I'll have enough karma points when I get old and, and uh, need to be looked after. <laughs> Mike, so thank you. Mike says, Merry Christmas, Terry. Merry Christmas. And here is Joe Penny, fellow punner, not meaning me. He, If he and my husband ever got together, they would pun like crazy. They would be unbelievable, these two. How are you? I'm here. Hospital uh, unexpectedly delayed until next week. I'm, I'm, um, but, but you kind of figured it, didn't you, Joe, Joe? Because it's the holidays. And honestly, I think they did you a favor. You don't really want someone distracted when they're going to take care of you, right? You want them focused. And Christmas, boy, holidays, they, they got they got one head in eggnog and the other head, you know, so let's have them dedicated to you, right? Yeah, dedicated to you. That's what we want. Joe, I love you and I'm grateful to have you here chatting with me. Congratulations on 24 years of marriage. Greg, you're so sweet to say that. Thank you. It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> He's my best friend. And it's just so sanctuary. You know, when that life outside is crazy and nuts, we come home and go, oh. and you know, it's nice because we've got a friend staying with, we got my best friend staying with us right now. And she said the same thing. I sleep well here. And then I'm ready to start the day. And she, that little tigress, she goes and gets them. And then she comes back and she eats the food and we chat for a bit. And then I leave her, I leave her be so she can catch up on Ted, Ted Lasso. <laughs> because I introduced it to her, telling her it was going to be fantastic. And uh, I have no idea who that was, but they were nice enough to hang up. Oh, maybe they remembered that I'm broadcasting. But anyway, it's nice. It's really nice. It's it's a great, and thank you. What a sweet thing to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You and Lindsay are truly blessed. Give him a hug from us. Um, loving you and keeping you safe uh, for us. I will do that, um, Diane. You have a heart, big, 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 giant, big, giant heart. Ed makes coffee for me every day. Debbie, isn't it nice? Aren't you just, don't you just feel so special? He cooks dinner for me and I feel like a queen. I really do because I cooked for the family for years and I didn't mind it. I like it, but, oh, you know, he, yeah, yeah. It means a lot. like last night we're sitting there and I said, I really want to get some work done for Lynette. She's been very patient with me. She's been very understanding. And, uh, I want to do this for her and for us. It's not just for her. It's for us. I'm illustrating a new book we're working on. And um, and I turned to him and I said, you know what? I feel like eating. I mean, it was raining. We were all happy to be in from the cold last night. It's like we could run up to one of the best poke bowl places in the universe, but we don't want to go. We don't want to go out. <laughs> No, no, no. We don't want to go out. We are comfy in here. We want to stay in here. What can we do in here? And so, so I said to my husband, could we have a bowl of soup and a 
um, grilled cheese sandwich. Can we make something yum, crunchy, and delicious? And he went in and made it. I got that, he said. And he went in and made it. Oh, my gosh. Yay. Um, ooh, I'm going to just leave that. That's an important message. But I'm staying focused on you guys. And we'll do that after. But congratulations, Debbie Mark. That is that. Hang on to that one. That's a special person. Merry Christmas to your public, too, says Diane. Um, I thought I was on your tribe podcast. LOL hugs. Well, you can do both ways, can't you, Diane? Yeah, yeah. And uh, just so you know, uh, I've got three things I've got to figure out for the tribe, right? We've got to figure out Zoom call what time coming Wednesday. Then we've got to, I've got to figure out when is our treasure chest and third wins our story time date. So I'll post it and then you can, you can weigh in on that. Um, so I'll let you know just in case, you know, you probably heard it there too, but this will give you, I'll do it both sides so you can do it. That's a message for the tribe. But uh, Diane, since she thought she was on the tribe, let me just help her out a little bit. Uh, my mom and dad who are still with us uh, are 89 for mom, 96 for dad. Go dad and mom um, have been married for 72 years. Rock. Do you believe that? Is that amazing? So my father and mother divorced when I was 12. And then when I was about, when I graduated high school, they moved in together. They moved back home. I think it was that quick. So they were happier unmarried, but still knew they needed to be together. You may know people like that, my parents. So my dad uh, married my mom. My dad was 23. My mom was 19. So my dad just passed at 90. Do the math. My mom is like 80. What would that be? 86. And so whatever that math is in between, that's how long they were married in their minds, not officially. Now here, Greg is talking about his parents married officially for this long, met their soulmate, stayed together, and now congratulations. Oh, mwah. please, Greg, let them know that. What an honor it is that you shared that with us all today. Will you please let them know that or play this part? Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Man, you really did it, guys. You're so happy. You're so lucky. Bet you bless each other every day. Bet you're thrilled. Bet you're great. And you know sometimes there's fate. But happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Greg's mom and Greg's dad. Woo! There you go. You can play that for them, Greg. Tell them I'm so thrilled for them. And I'm honored. It's an honor and a privilege to have to get to know about them. Um, hugs and kisses to them. Wendy Cooper, how are you? I keep hoping to find someone who is my soulmate. It's been so long I've felt loved. And it's been so long since I've been felt loved and appreciated, I uh, believe. Yes. Uh, if you haven't done it already, Wendy, my advice is to write down what you want and carry it with you. Write it on a notebook paper. Write it on paper. Don't put it in your phone. Write it. Take the act of writing it down. Write it down. Write it down. When you write something physically, it goes through your body all the way to your toes and up to your head and instills itself into your being. And you will find that person. And then go out and enjoy yourself. Uh, find a friend first is a great thing. Um, enjoy a friendship first. Um, that's the stuff that lasts the friendship part, the relating on different levels, other than the one that when people are together, uh, many, many people today start with the bedroom, don't they? And mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. don't, I'm not just saying this cause I'm 66 guys. I'm saying this because that can fade. All right. You want to get to know that person's soul first, hence the word soul mate. So be friends first, go out, do things. If there's something that you do that's fun and cool, okay? For example, my son, Ian, um, he uh, was looking for a soulmate. And this bit 
the online bit maybe works for some of you. I'm going to say, I'm not going to tell you it's completely, mm, but there can be a lot of altering I've learned of what the picture is and everything and people react funky. I mean, I was introduced to that catfishing show on, on MT that was MTV show. That's like, I don't know where I saw it, but I saw it when I was shooting the um, fifth season of outrageous pumpkins. And that show was how one woman talked about she's a heavier woman. So she altered in Photoshop her look because she wanted people to come. Well, then the guy that she was talking to, she thought was a photo. He had taken it from a model <laughs> and put it on to represent him. Gosh, you don't want to be in that. So if you get together, so let's go back to my son, Ian, he loves sports. So as the pandemic lifted, he started to play sports again. He, he did beach volleyball. He started surfing. He started, um, um, getting together bonfires and things like that. Cause he lives near the beach. He started to interact with people his age and lo and behold, he met a lovely lady and now they are on their exploration as to whether they're soulmates or not. But friends first, he, he came to me and he said, you know, Terry, you're not going to believe this. I'm his stepmom. You're not going to believe this, but we were friends first, just like you said. So you never know guys. You never know. Very special. Very, very, you, you, you deserve this. So Wendy, my love, my gift to you today is to sit down, take out a piece of paper or a, and, and write down those attributes and start with sense of humor. Yeah. I think a good sense of humor goes a long way, but also some of the things, you know, um, in mine, uh, he, he can't love sports. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a, on the list until I met my beautiful husband who loves movies and sushi. <laughs> Ding. Yes. Write that stuff down on paper. You can find it. You know what it is. Paper. Let me see if I have a sheet. Looks like this. Sometimes it has lines. Okay. And you use a pen. Do you guys know what a pen is? Now I'm not being facetious here. We write everything down in our phones and it goes up to a thing that is a cloud. And the cloud for me is outside right now telling me there's going to be rain. I'm grateful for the cloud. I'm happy for the cloud. I do not diss the cloud, but what I will tell you about the cloud and about being in all your, 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 your devices like my phone is that it works, but not as good as taking a pen. Pen, that's this. It does. Look, 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 look what it does. Look, listen, listen. When it does this, the writing starts. This, the writing stops. Okay? So enjoy yourself. Get a pen that feels good in your hands. Get one that makes a cool sound. Or maybe... Uh, I've got one that lights up. I've got one that, that, you know, maybe it's Disney. Just find one that's special and then write down the attributes you want in friends, um, in soulmates, in future career, whatever is something you want, write it down. And you, there's so many cool, let me just pull out some cool pins here. Here's one that's a mermaid tail. Yo, man, come on. Look at that pin. Now, this one doesn't, you know, clicky clicky, but how fun it would be like to have this fishtail swimming across your page, right? Pins rock, man. And then check this one out. This is a Walt Disney Imagineering. Look at that. Ooh, a Walt Disney Imagineering paint pen. And you twist the brushy part and they come in colors. I like them sitting at my desk because I'm an artist. I like them sitting at my desk because they, they look like paintbrushes in the desk. But writing with one could be cool, right? Right? Guys, you got to get into this pen thing. And then you may love it so much that you journal. And journaling is really fun. You pick a journal that feels good in your hands. Jim Rohn used to say that a journal would, uh, you'd get a journal that was expensive and felt good, this one, ooh. And then inside, what I really love about it, 
Ooh, is that it has dots. So inside here are dots because I draw or a grid, not dots, grid. So I draw on the grid. I draw, I sketch, I write all kinds of ideas go into this lovely, lovely uh, journal right here. And uh, they're really, journals are, are amazing. They're just amazing. So um, get one, you can sketch in it, sketchbook, journal together. You can paint in it. You can do all kinds of cool stuff in it. But the one thing that's nice is you can, you know, write your thoughts, your notes, whatever. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So I encourage you to do it. But uh, Wendy, piece of paper. So you fold it up and you keep it in your wallet. Okay. Keep it in your wallet. And uh, join the tribe for more. You might find someone in the tribe you dig. You know, you never know. Um, we're not, a, we're face to face, but uh, seriously, it's fun. I'll tell you right now that um, uh, two people, and it's not dating people, but just good friends, which many of us just really just want to have more quality, good, genuine friends, don't we? Someone that just seems to light you up because they're a good friend. Um, and Evan Hunter is one of these sparkly people that when you get to know him, you will pretty much light up. Uh, and uh, Naomi, my dear friend Naomi, they are not close in land, but he and Naomi really hit it off on the friend level, okay? And she just loves in the tribe having the opportunity not just in the tribe when we gather as a tribe, but getting to communicate with him outside of the tribe because little relationships like this are formed, you know, um, and they are such good friends and they're, they're really grateful to each other. Another one is my friend, Sydney, who should be a Disney princess. I don't know what's wrong with Disney. The woman is an, a reincarnated Disney princess. They should just, you know, with her, all you have to do is put her in the outfit. That's all it takes, you know. But there's something about height, which personally, I don't know how you feel going to Disney and seeing characters. But when someone looks as much like a princess as Sydney does, you are not going to go, gosh, she's a little short for a princess. Unless you're a fool. I'm sorry. I just don't think that's important when someone looks so much like a Disney princess. She really doesn't have to work other than put in the put on the outfit, right? And I just, every time I see her, I say, you are a Disney princess. You should be a Disney princess because you are, you know, there are people out there, you know who I'm talking about, who look like Disney prince or princess. They just have that spark. You know, once they get in the outfit and maybe they they do their hair like it for her, I would think she was a princess incognito when she doesn't have the hair, the makeup and the, and the outfit. But I mean, some people just resonate Disney princess, don't they? Other than us, the cosplay Disney princess. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking to people who just have that look. And I am blessed to know several that should be Disney princesses. She just just stop guys. Uh, my friend Savannah sounds like a Disney princess. What's the matter with you, Disney? You should hire this girl. They don't have to change their voice. They just need to talk. Her voice is way, I can't even get there. And she sounds like a Disney princess. So it's kind of like, you know, we know these people, don't we? We know these people. They don't have to tweak their voice. They don't have to fake it in any way. They just are. And what a joy to be around them. What an absolute joy to be around them. Now, Joe is saying he just passed 4,000 member mark, classic Disneyland, classic Disney movies, switching to a private group this weekend to really uh, switching it, switching it to a private group this weekend too is really amazing. Good for you. Congratulations. Congratulations to you and keep it going. In fact, Bob Gurr told me he's got a following on, uh, I think it's Instagram. He's got 4,000. And anyway, he told me Bob Gurr, amazing Disney legend told me he's got 4,000 members too. And I told him, uh, uh, congratulations. K -k -k congratulations is what I said. So yay, you know, good, good, good. And uh, congratulations, Joe. But honestly, yes, yes. Um, these people, you know, you got to keep owning it. You know, I don't know why Disney doesn't just grab these people. It's less work for them. 
you know, and these people know they look like a lot of them, you know, oh yeah, I've, I've got that before. You know, someone who looks like uh, you walk up to them and you think they're a famous actor, but they look so much like said famous actor that they, um, that they uh, dress up or, you know, you walk up to them and you say, hey, famous actor, you know, um, and they're not, but they know it. Yeah. Own it. Yep. Own it. My cat had bladder stone, says Susan. Diet was the only answer, but ultrasound was $450. Mary, <laughs> Mary to all. Yes, yes. In fact, uh, uh, our, our vet says that uh, it could be diet. It could be ultrasound or it could be surgery. And Susan, thank God for pet insurance. <laughs> All I'm going to say. Oh, let me say that again. Thank God for good pet insurance. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Joe says, I would love for Greg to join us. Yes. Well, there you go, Greg. They're, 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 they're hunting for you, buddy. They're hunting for you. He's hunting for you. Joe needs to join the tribe, though. Okay, I keep pushing on him. He comes here and he brags about his private group, but he needs to be on the tribe and visit with us. Yep, yep, I've told him. I've told him. Now I'm told him. See, I'm becoming an old person again. <laughs> Hello, Bob Berdine. Uh, We were talking about regrets. That's one of my regrets. I didn't meet Rose sooner. My heart was so empty. She had a positive effect on my demeanor and my children just melted my heart. Of course your kids did. And you two are just, you want to talk about lighting up a room when you two enter. Yeah, you guys could power New York and the United States. It wouldn't cost us anything. We wouldn't even need, you know, we, we are having this electric car issue in the United States. We're kind of like, we want electric cars, but how are we going to get the, the electricity? Just plug into Bob and Rose Burdine. Yeah, that would just, when they walk into a room, the place just, it can be pitch dark. Wow. There they are. Just two of the most joyful you are ever going to find. So much fun to be around. So uh, they have a following of their own. So they're amazing. And I love you. Merry Christmas to you guys. Michelle says, it's true, everybody. The tribe is better than liver. <laughs> and Michelle, isn't she cute? She's a funny lady. See, I tell you, sense of humor goes a long way. Yeah, that girl is good. Uh, Michelle Donnell, does the tribe come with onions? Some people eat onions. See, see, now you got Joe going. Now you got him going, Michelle. Bobberdine, you brought us all together. Without you, we'd never have met these wonderful people that are the tribe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, 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 you guys, you can dip a toe in the water. Absolutely. Nasty cough, Terry. I hope you get over it before Christmas. Oh, just a little one. And that just because I ran out of tea. You know, it's the talking cough. It's just your throat gets dry. And the reason my throat, my throat, my throat gets dry, uh, <laughs> Greg, the reason my throat gets dry is because I'm on a medication that in one in two million people sucks the, sucks the, sucks the moisture out of your mucous membranes and cause me to cough. Yeah. 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 So it's a drag, but lucky me <laughs> and they can't change it. So I just got to put up with it and I never know when it's going to take all the moisture out of my mouth and throat. So sometimes it can be a real drag. So fear not, Greg, I am good. And uh, come see us on the tribe. So excited to have you there. Will do. I know. I love you, man. I love you, man. Thank you for your precious advice. Wendy, you got it. And if you need more, you know, you don't have to join the tribe, but gosh, you would be a real blessing there. Be fun to have you there. Greg says, uh, my wife, Sandy, and I have been married for 42 years, and she is my soulmate. The reason I feel the way this way is because we share the same numbers in our birthday. When you reduce our dates down, check this out. Mine is 8-21-1954. 21 Club! I'll explain that to you in a minute, um, Greg. And here, hers is 21854. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is pretty wild. This is pretty wild. You're right. Greg, you're right. Okay, so my birthday is 621 21 club uh, 57. 
six twenty one fifty seven, and my husband's is two twenty one fifty seven. We share a lot of the same. <laughs> Congratulations! The twenty one club is a group of us that celebrate being born on the twenty first. And I have so many friends. In fact, yesterday I was supposed to say, guys, tribe, I failed to get on and wish Adam a happy birthday. He's a member of the 21 Club and I messed up. So I am going to have some explaining to do, Lucy. I'm going to have to go fix that because he was in my heart. I just didn't get to the computer. But uh, wow. Wendy Cooper, look at her paper, pen. Whoop, whoop. Hello, Vince G. When are you going to join the tribe, buddy? You are such a ray of sunshine. We would love to see the sun come up in the form of Vince G on the tribe. You got to check it out, right? Please. Man, what a joyful noise you are. How are you? Happy holidays. Diane says, got to go. Have a very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I'm about to wind it down too, but I wanted to make sure I got to talk to you all before I left. I've been journaling for 37 years. Is this why you're such a sparkly guy? Because you've been journaling for 37 years. You ought to show people on your podcast. Is it? Can it be a visual podcast sometimes? Would that be show notes? I'm still learning, Vince. But wouldn't it be cool if you could show all your journals? Like the backs, not inside. Because some journals can be very private. Can't they? But you could show those journals. I'll bet you, you have shelves of them, right? As once they, oh, I love it. I love journaling myself too. Absolutely. And Vince, while I'm here, podcast 14th, a go. Okay. January 14th, right? It's a go. So far, so good. Um, I don't have my new date book, which is paper and pen, which I discussed earlier. Yeah, here it is. Uh, the new guts just were available. So I've got to put new guts in it. And then it will be official. The 14th is good. Okay. So uh, let's con let's talk after the first and we'll uh, solidify that. All right. All right. Thank you for having me. He's got a great podcast and he's invited me to speak on it. Goody, goody, goody. Vince, rock star that you are. Joe says, speaking of sports, Terry, the LA city ordinance banning rodeo and related animal sports has been delayed. If uh, it's still around, but the Western sports community has spoken out. Stay tuned. Also, the national finals rodeo in Vegas ended on the 13th, and it was a heck of a year. Getting ready for 2024 pro rodeo season to start up next month in Denver at the National Stock and Show and Rodeo. So you can see that Joe doesn't care about rodeo at all. But uh, this is what I'm talking about, that there are all kinds of people like this that are in the tribe, which is why I pressure Joe a lot to say, you know, people like Vince and stuff like that, because we love all walks of life there. And we learn about all walks of life in these venues. You know, uh, it's so exciting, so special, so sweet that uh, uh, just cool, you know, just really cool to hear about stuff like this. And I can't wait to hear more, Joe. I'm excited about it. Angie, thank you. I was wondering where you were, girl. I was wondering where my girl was. Hi, Angie. How are you? Merry Christmas to you and yours as well. Yes, yes, yes. Vince says, good morning, Terry. Vince says, just waking up. What did I miss? Vince says, today. <laughs> and yes, he's answering the things I said. Um, yes, they mean the world to me. See? See? Isn't he cute? He's really cute. Yes, he's full of. Yeah. And then, sweet. Okay. Makes you wonder about his podcast because they're so short words, right? You, you wonder if the podcast is going to be mostly me talking. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, guys, I love you. You guys have really sparked my day. We went close to two hours, but I felt the need. And uh, I'm going to tell you, a lot of you people sent me love and hugs and kisses and thumbs up today more than I've ever had before. And I want to thank you for that. Uh, what a lovely gift. But uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for uh, telling me how much you loved it. And thank you for staying and uh, seeing the whole thing through. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, many people are telling me there's ways I can build my channel and I'm going to work on that for uh, the free channel as well as my Patreon page. But uh, I'm grateful for what I have and all of you 
and you diehard friends and fans and favorites, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're a really great gift, um, a special gift to me, and I'm grateful for all of you. Hugs, loves, and there's a few more. Here's a Merry Christmas, everyone. And Vince, look, now it's emojis. Check it out. <laughs> Vince, you're too much. And Greg, I love being a member of the 21 Club, but check this out with our family. Almost everyone in my family has birthdays between 20 and 29. Dad is January 20th. Both my sister, Helena, and brother Kurt, July 29th. But 15 years apart. Whoa! Your parents liked that time of year, didn't they? Not the birthday, but before. Wow, that's awesome. Um, Sister Kathy, November 24th. Our grandmother and my daughter, Dory, November 21st, but 75 years apart. Wow. Wow. And our youngest daughter, Caroline, is December December 33. Wow. December 33. Oh, she's 33 in December. <laughs> I was like, is there a 33 in December? Get, I, it took me a minute. But wow, that's awesome. Fantastic, Greg. That's amazing. My family... Um, are the summer months. So a birthday in June, birthday July was my father, birthday August, my sister, birthday September, my mother. And we're done. My cousin is November. Yep. Uh, you're the best. Wishing you the merriest of Christmas and a joyous new year, beautiful lady. Remember, I am not going to be broadcasting on Christmas. Maybe New Year's. Maybe, but probably later because I always get up at eight o'clock and watch the Rose Parade. Obviously. <laughs> but my loves, my friends, everyone. Um, see, Bob's there with love. 23rd. I get it. I do. Don't you worry. Hugs and loves. Be sure you do something nice for someone in your life or someone not in your life. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. The other day, I witnessed someone sitting down to a meal only to find out it was paid for by someone else, and they had no idea who it was. Oh, isn't that cool? Doesn't mean you have to do that. Being nice could be a card. Being nice could be a phone call. Being nice could just be, I love you. How you doing? Hi. Speaking briefly. Yeah, super cool, super fun, sweet, kind, right? Right. Be well, be safe. Uh, not 33, December 23, not 33. No worries, no worries. I got you. I got your back. I thought you was 33 years old. So, uh, yes, my loves. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy Kwanzaa, happy what, happy Hanukkah, happy every anything you celebrate around this time, but celebrate. Keep the child inside. It's going to make you feel a whole lot better. Uh, send some love to someone maybe you haven't in a while, and uh, I'll, I'll see you soon, right? Have a merry, merry Christmas and a very, very happy holiday. My way of sharing love is by donating platelets with the Red Cross. That's awesome. And I am, I have some charities that I donate to, but I'm telling you guys, full circle is about to happen now. Uh, those dollar dragon, um, uh, you're the dragon lotto tickets. They are brightening up a lot of smiles only for a buck, a buck, a person, a buck, a ticket, and you can give it to the person. Okay. All right. Have a good one. I love you. Hugs. And we'll talk. See you later. See you next Friday. Bye for now.